All right, folks, it's time to help you out just a little bit with assignment 28. Now, this is a, a pretty pretty hefty stoichiometry assignment. I think if you can understand this, you're, you're good to go with just about any stoichiometry problem I can ask you on any homework assignment or, or any exam. So, let's start uh, from the textbook, page 321, um, through pages uh, 322, number 16, 31, and 33. I'm going to help you with number 16. 31 and 33, you are going to be on your own. So on number 16, we have salicylic acid reacting with acetic anhydride uh, to form aspirin and acetic acid. Now, part A says, uh, what mass of aspirin can be produced? And it wants this answer in kilograms from 75.0 moles of salicylic acid. Now, it's nice because we have our balanced equation. That's what we always start stoichiometry with. So, number one, balance our equation. That's squared away. Then, we know moles of salicylic acid. So, 75.0 moles of salicylic acid. I'm going to call that SA, if that's okay with you. And we need to go from moles of salicylic acid to moles of or after aspirin. So aspirin is C9H8O4. C9H8O4. It's a one to one mole ratio. So we've gone from moles of salicylic acid to moles of aspirin. Now we're going to go from moles of aspirin, C9H8O4, into grams. Now, the molecular weight of aspirin, that's the weight of nine carbons, eight hydrogens, and four oxygens um, added together, turns out to be 180.17 grams per mole. Now, if I were to stop right here, I'd have my answer in grams, but we're asked for the answer in kilograms, so we're going to have one more step here. We're going to hop out of grams and get into kilograms, and a kilogram is a thousand grams. So let's see what we end up with for 16A. We have our uh, 75.0 moles uh, times 180.17. And we'll divide that by 1,000. And we end up with, to three significant figures, 13.5 kilograms. And that would be... 13.5 uh, kilograms of our aspirin C9H8O4. Part B is very similar. It says what mass of acetic anhydride would be created, or excuse me, would be required. So we're going to start with our 75 moles of salicylic acid, and we're going to go from moles of salicylic acid to moles of now acetic anhydride is C4H6O3, and that's a one-to-one -one ratio. We'll go from moles of C4H6O3 into grams. And one mole of acetic anhydride, that's the weight of four carbons, six hydrogens, and three oxygens, turns out to be 70.07 grams. Once again, it's asked for the mass produced in kilograms, so we're going to hop out of grams and get into kilograms. A kilogram is the same as a thousand grams. So moles of salicylic acid divide out, moles of acetic anhydride divide out, grams divide out, and we're in kilograms. So let's see, we have 75.0 uh, times 70.07 divided by a thousand. We end up with to three significant figures again 5.26 kilograms of acetic anhydride would be required. And the last part of number 16 uh, wants the volume of acetic acid formed. Now the density of acetic acid is given in the problem 1.05 grams per mil. So we'll start with our 75 moles of salicylic acid again. We will go from moles of salicylic acid to moles of acetic acid, H C2H3O2. Once again, 
a nice pretty one-to-one -one mole ratio. Now we're going to go from moles of acetic acid to grams. And the mole of acetic acid, that's the weight of a total of four hydrogens, two carbons and two oxygens, is 60.06 grams. So moles of acetic acid have divided out, uh, excuse me, moles of salicylic acid. Moles of acetic acid have divided out, and now we're in grams of acetic acid. Now we want volume, so we're going to use our density as a conversion factor to go from grams to milliliters and the density is 1.05 grams per mil. So grams of acetic acid are divided out and then our final step is going from milliliters to liters. One liter is the same as a thousand mils. So let's see what we end up with here. We have 75 times 60.06. Let's scoot this up a bit so you can see it all, I hope. So 60.06 divided by 1.05 and divide that by 1,000 and we end up with 4.29 liters of acetic acid would be produced as well. Okay, now that's pretty tough. If you guys were able to follow your way through uh, problem 16, you're pretty sharp. You should be good to go on the rest of your stoichiometry problems. Now, there's also some other problems in assignment 28. So we'll begin with uh, other problem number one. Now, three and four are going to be extra credit. They're a little bit more difficult, but I think you guys can do them. So number one, um, how much silver phosphate is produced if 10 grams of silver acetate are reacted with excess sodium phosphate? You write the equation. Now, I've given you the answer. Of course, whenever I do that, you need to make sure you guys show a detailed setup. You cannot just write down the answer and expect to get credit. So, let's see. Uh, we are reacting silver acetate with sodium phosphate. So, silver acetate. Silver is plus one. Acetate is negative one. So it's AgC2H3O2. Reacts with sodium phosphate. Sodium's positive one. Phosphate's a polyatomic. PO4, three negative. So it's Na3PO4. Reacts to form. This should be an obvious double replacement reaction. Silver and sodium will switch partners. So now silver. 1 plus with phosphate, 3 negative, would form Ag3PO4, and then sodium and acetate. Sodium 1 plus, acetate 1 negative, NaC2H3O2. Now, stoichiometry is the mathematics of a balanced equation. So I have three silvers here. I need to put a 3 over there to give me three silvers on the reactant side. That gives me three acetates. So I'm going to put a three here to give me three acetates on the product side. I have my three sodiums on both sides. The equation is now balanced. Then we're going to go from grams of what we know, 10.0 grams of silver acetate. And then we go from grams of what we know into moles. Now, the formula weight of silver acetate, that's the weight of a silver, two carbons, three hydrogens, and two oxygens, turns out to be 166.92 grams per mole. Then we will go from moles of silver acetate to moles of what we're after, which in this case is how much silver phosphate, Ag3. PO4. The mole ratio comes from the um, coefficients in the balanced equation. So 3 for silver acetate, 1 for silver phosphate. And then finally, we can go from moles of silver phosphate to grams of silver phosphate. One mole of silver phosphate has a formula weight of 418 0.58 grams. Now that's the weight of three silvers, a phosphorus, and four oxygens added together. Now, my answer should be 8.36. Let's see how we did. So, 
uh, we have um, uh, 10 grams divided by 166.92 divided by 3 and then times 418.58 that gives me 8.35889 now we're only allowed 3 sig figs so we're going to round that off to 8.36 grams and that's exactly what we should have gotten so remember the answer is here to help you if you made a mistake you'll know right away you can go back and check your formula weights maybe those are wrong maybe you balance the equation wrong but the answer is there for you to know right away whether you've gotten it right or you've done something wrong it's not for you to simply copy okay let's take a look at problem number two other problem number two um, let me give you a little help that I think I say in the question you should look it up yourself but we'll help you anyway it says a plant needs to make 728 grams of glucose through the, photo, through the process of photosynthesis how many grams of water are required and if you don't know what glucose or photosynthesis is look them up so I'm going to tell, tell you what it is we are going to be producing glucose now it's C6 H12O6 and the process of photosynthesis involves carbon dioxide reacting with water vapor to produce your glucose and of course everyone knows oxygen gas now to balance this we need to put a 6 in front of the CO2 to give me 6 carbons 6 in front of the water to give me 12 hydrogens and now let's see I have 12 plus 6 18 oxygens there's 6 there I need 12 more so I'll put a 6 in front of O2 so there's my balanced equation then I want to make that many grams of glucose so that's what I'm going to start with 728 grams of C6 H12O6 I'm going to go from grams to moles and one mole of glucose and that's the weight of six carbons, twelve hydrogens and six oxygens is 180.18 grams per mole and we are going to go from moles of glucose to moles of, what are we after? how many grams of water? so we're going to go to moles of water first and that's one glucose requires six waters and then finally moles of water oh, that should be H2O to grams one mole of water has a molecular weight of 18.02 grams so let's see what we end up with here on other problem number two we have uh, 728 divided by 180.18 times 6 times 18.02 enter now my calculator says 436.848 but we're only allowed three significant figures so we have to round that off to 436 grams of water which oops sorry my mistake 436.848 rounds off to 437 grams of water which is what my answer key tells you okay all right, let's do number three. Uh, hopefully you guys are getting the hang of this by now. This one has a little bit of rouge and lipstick added to it. You'll see because um, I'm going to give you the volume of something and we have to find its mass. And then I want the mass of air, um, which will involve a neat little conversion factor, which I showed you in your notes. Hopefully you remember. So how many grams of air are needed to burn 150 mils of ethanol? The density is 0.789 grams per mil, and air, as you recall from your notes, is 20.7% oxygen by mass. So remember what burning is. We have C2H5OH, we need oxygen, and we will make CO2 and water vapor. This is a combustion reaction. Now, to balance this, uh, let's see, it looks like I need two carbons on this side. I need a total of six hydrogens, so I'll put a three there. 
that gives me four plus three, seven oxygens. I have one here, so if I put a three in front of the O2, that should now balance. Now I'm given 150 mils of ethanol, 150.0 mils, C2H5OH. Now there's no conversion factor that allows us to go from milliliters to moles. We can go from grams to moles. So we first need to go from milliliters to grams. We're going to use our density to do that. We're going to use density as a conversion factor. Doesn't this say that there are 0.789 grams per milliliter? Voila! Milliliters are gone and I'm in grams of ethanol. Now I can go from grams of ethanol to moles of ethanol. And the molecular weight of C2H5OH turns out to be 46.08 grams. So 46.08 grams per mole. It's the weight of two carbons, six hydrogens, and an oxygen. Then we're going to go from moles of ethanol to moles of, well, we need air. Well, oxygen is in there, so I don't see air in the equation here, but I do see oxygen. So let's go to moles of oxygen. One methanol, excuse me, ethanol, requires three oxygens. And then let's go from moles of oxygen to grams. One mole of oxygen is 32.00 grams. Now, if I were to stop right here, I'd have grams of oxygen. I want to find out the number of grams of air. So, we're going to add another step here. We're going to get out of grams of oxygen and get into grams of air. Now, if air is 20.7 percent by mass oxygen, doesn't that mean if I have 100 grams of air, 20.7 grams of it would be oxygen? And that's my conversion factor. I've gotten out of grams of oxygen and I'm in grams of air. So, let's go ahead and calculate this. <clears throat> we'll see what we end up with. So, we have 150 milliliters, 0 0.0, times 0 0.789, that's our density, divided by 46.08, times 3, remember if it's on top we multiply, if it's on the bottom we divide, times 32.00, times 100 divided by 20.7. Now my calculator says 1191.12. Well, we're only allowed uh, three significant figures. My density only has three sig figs in it. So my answer, instead of being 1191.12, can only have three digits in it. So 1190 would be the number of grams of air, and of course that matches my answer. Now, I'm not going to help you with number four. You're going to be on your own with that one, but I think you guys can do it now. If you need help, please come see me before or after school, not during lunch, and I'll be happy to help you. Thanks. Good luck with the rest.